I can tell you without any fear of contradiction that the challenges that are besetting the church today, they started a long time ago. Only that, we were, we were not paying much attention. The state of the church that we have today did not start today. Started many years ago. I can tell you some of the challenges that have laid to the compromised state of the church today. The first one is that the Bible was given to us, was introduced to us before we were taught how to interpret it and how to handle it. Let me say that again. One of the challenges that is besetting the church today is because many years ago, many generations ago, when the Bible was given to us, most of us received or handled the Bible, only the Bible, before we knew how to read it, even how to interpret it. As a result, we interpreted the Bible as we presupposed, as we imagined, according to our pre-understanding. As a result, we misinterpreted lots of scriptures. And the following generations inherited that kind of mess. As I am speaking, there is a lot of laxity. People handle scriptures carelessly. We interpret the scriptures as we please. Actually, the challenge is that even when you twist the Bible, it still sounds spiritual. That's a huge problem. And that's the reason why today people teach all sorts of things, some of which God never said. Because we interpret the scriptures willy-nilly. We interpret the scriptures as we please. We are so casual and careless when we approach the scriptures. We don't fear. We don't tremble. We don't approach the scriptures with caution. Whether it's out of ignorance or it's deliberate, but there is a huge problem that scriptures are being handled carelessly big time. So the problem that has led to some of the problems we are facing today, it's because everybody preaches the scriptures as they think, as they presuppose, as they please. So that creates a lot of bad doctrine. The second challenge, which is besetting the church today, it is the prosperity gospel. I do not deny God blesses people. God prospers people. But when we talk about the prosperity gospel, the main challenge with the prosperity gospel, it is the obsession with prosperity to the extent that every scripture in the Bible, we want to force it to mean material prosperity. The biggest challenge that is posed by the prosperity gospel, it is the twisting of the scriptures in order to tell people about material breakthroughs or material prosperity. To the extent that we force the scriptures to say what they never meant. That's another tragedy which we must be worried about. Today, here is an example. In Ephesians chapter 1, on verse number 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Many times I've heard people preach from this verse, Ephesians 1 verse number 3. They preach or they quote the words, He has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Many of the times that I've heard people preach from this scripture, they are talking about material prosperity. To say if, look, God has blessed us in Christ with every blessing. In other words, they deliberately omit or ignore the way the spiritual. So they say that God has blessed us in Christ with every blessing. Every blessing. So the emphasis is on every blessing. So to the common mind, people think of anything that they can think of. Any blessing, including material blessing. But always remember that the, tr the true meaning of a verse is in the context. Read the other verses and you see what the verses are talking about, then you make a precise interpretation. I always say that, do not cherry pick your favorite verses and try to interpret them isolatedly. Because every verse whose context is ignored can be forced to mean anything you presuppose or anything you prefer. And that's the mistake a lot of people have been making on this verse. Let me remind you, every time we misinterpret the scriptures, number one, we desecrate those scriptures. We reduce their power. Okay? Number two, we get away with a wrong message, which God didn't exactly say. And number three, we miss the real message, which God wanted to speak to us. So come
context is key. So let's read again from verse number 3. And I'll take you all the way to verse number 9. So the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him, Christ, before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth, in Christ. Now, get me right here. I'm not against blessings. I do believe in God for blessings. Actually, God has blessed me in so many words, ways, including material blessings. But, let us look at this context and respect it. First and foremost, the scripture says, God has blessed us in Christ. And it says, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So this number one, look at the word spiritual, which means the blessings that I've been talking about here are not material blessings. But the material blessings may come as a result of the spiritual. But here the Bible is talking about every spiritual blessing. So which means here the topic, the blessings being mentioned here are spiritual blessings. Not necessarily material blessings. I'm not against receiving material blessings. No, no. There are scriptures to quote for that, for material blessings. But let's respect the context here. This is about spiritual blessings. And look at again. Where? What is the dimension of these blessings? It says, in the heavenly places. And then, the Bible begins to explain, to clarify, from verse number 4. To say, even as he chose us, in him before the foundation of the world. What to do? That we should be holy and blameless before God. Now you see the spiritual blessings? The Bible is, the context is beginning to explain the spiritual blessings. So number one, the spiritual and heavenly blessings here. This, this is number one. It is the spiritual blessing of us being made holy and blameless before the Father. So that is about salvation. And the Bible goes on to say, in love he predestined us for adoption to himself as the sons of God through Jesus Christ. So the second clarification, the second or third, because the first clarification of those spiritual blessings or the spiritual blessing in the heavenly places is that it is the blessing of being sanctified, the blessing of being made holy and blameless before the Father. You know, the blessing of being made holy and blameless, it is far greater than material blessings of mansions, of cars, of good jobs, huge businesses. The, the spiritual blessings are greater than all the silver and gold of this world. So when the Bible says, you, he has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing, in the heavenly blessings, the Bible goes on to say, so that we should be holy. So it's the blessing of holiness, it is the blessing of blamelessness before the Father. Then it also says that it is the blessing of adoption as the sons of God. Did you ever consider that being a child of God, it's a spiritual blessing? In heavenly places, the Bible goes on to say in verse number 7, in him we have redemption through his blood. The word redemption, it is a marketplace language. The word redemption, which is agorazo, it means to buy out. So Jesus redeemed us. He bought us with a priceless amount of riches. So the spiritual blessing, apart from being holy and blameless, being adopted as God's children, it is also the blessing of being redeemed, being bought by the most expensive price through the blood of Jesus. The Bible goes on to say, the forgiveness of our trespasses. So this is also the spiritual blessing in heavenly places, the blessing of forgiveness of our trespasses. The Bible goes, goes on to say, this forgiveness is given to us according to the riches of his grace. We did not earn it. It's because of his love. In verse number 8, the grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will. The final blessing, spiritual blessing here in the heavenly blessings, it is the blessing of knowing the gospel, 
knowing the mystery of God's will. If you know the will of God, it is a spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Stay blessed as we continue to study God's word together.